below. This is my presentation. Um, no script, just the sheet, the rubric for the bullet points to have as a reference. So make sure I hit everything. Um, I have a whiteboard and markers, so I'll be drawing because I don't, I don't have Play-Doh. So I thought I, I thought I did, and it, uh, it all needed to be thrown away, and I didn't go out and buy more. I don't have money. Um, so I'll be drawing and just hope for the best. Uh, so if you had, if someone had a bacterial infection, they and they would go on, go into the doctor and most likely be prescribed antibiotics. If it, th that could be either like common cold, the flu, or like an ear infection. Um. <clears throat> so those would be the circumstances to being prescribed antibiotics. Uh, penicillin was discovered in a petri dish. It was mold that was attacking bacteria. Um, so what it does is it'll uh, it'll attack the so like if this is bacteria. And you have, you, you're given penicillin. It will, you know, weaken these, and if not, just try to try their hardest to kill them. They'll be injected the antibodies to fight off the antigen, fight the antigen being the bacteria. I get that stuff more with blood, but let's continue. A vaccine, on the other hand, is if you get a shot, most likely it's more of a preventative thing or to keep it from getting worse. So prevents it pretty much. Um, so you'll get a shot of a weaker form of that virus. Uh, in hopes to sort of kill off the virus. Um, I, uh, so, so that your, your immune system and your, your cells, they're familiar with it. And, you know, um, try their best to keep the virus from getting worse. Um, I don't have my, um, pretest for the the bacteria and the viruses thing that I, I my partner was Amy and either she has it or I or it's just in the classroom but I don't have it I believe we were fairly close to explaining how it worked at least at least with the bacteria we knew we kind of had that down is just it kills the kills the bacteria um viruses I I'm not sure we we mentioned like killer T cells or what actually happens to, a vi to we, well, we didn't know that it was um a weaker form of the virus and now we know that that it is so yes um Moving on to blood, uh, I was given a positive, so I'll just write that up here. I wish I had a red marker. <laughs> um, okay, so explain uh, your understanding of both the ABO blood grouping and the RH factor. So, um, lots of different blood types. You have, you have A, uh, B, AB, and O. And then you also have the, you know, the positive, negative, 
of each type. Um, so, uh, what, what it means is that, like, if you, well, take mine for example, um, if you had A positive blood, that means you have the A antigen and the B antibodies, so that, you know, they couldn't, you couldn't have the A antigen and A antibodies because it would attack a cell and kill it. Um, and then it's Rh positive, as you can see by the, the plus. Um, okay, I did that. Explain. Okay, uh, so if you were going to receive blood in a transfusion, you would have to, you could either receive A positive or O negative. O negative is the universal donor. Um, because they, um, it doesn't have any antigens, so it can be received, um, still, they, so O negative has both the anti-A and anti-B antibodies, which we didn't really get in depth on that, which I'd, I'd, I'd like to look into more on how that actually works, because... I'd always, I'd always think that the, because it has the A antibody too, that it would attack that, but, but it works. Um, if you were given, say, like, like, like B blood, it, B, B would have the B antigen and the A antibodies, so the A antibodies will attack the A antigens, thus killing it, killing the blood cell, causing, you know, um, agglutination, clumping, not clotting. Or, yeah, it wouldn't, you know, not maybe not kill the cell, but it would harm you and it could kill you if you got the wrong blood. Um... blood test. So we did this in class. I've done one in real life. It's kind of fun. You pick your finger and you put it in. So what you do is you'd have um, you have three circles and you put the blood you put a little bit of blood in each little container well, just separated part, um, and you would put drops into each one of these sections to, um, see, to determine the, the blood type. So if you put it, say this would be, this would, to find out if it was A, this will be B, and then this is the RH factor. Um, so if you put, I don't have red, which would be nice if I did, but I have this. So if you put blood in here, I'll just go with, I'll just put a little bit of blood in each one. Or a lot of blood. Um, it would, and you put the, the drops in A, this would be anti-A, which would be the anti-A, the A antibodies. So if you put the, the A antibodies into the blood, it'll, it'll cause the agglutination because the, it would be the A antibodies and the A antigens mixing and that doesn't go well. So it would, it would clump. That show. That's okay. okay. We'll see if that. Yeah, that's all there. Um, this would be the B antibodies and anti B drops. If that started clumping together, then it would. If 
if, it, if this didn't clump and this did, then it would show that it would be B because the B antibodies and B antigens wouldn't mix. And but it did, but this wouldn't do anything because it wouldn't wouldn't need it. Now this, because it is positive, it would have to clump to and showing that it has an RH factor that is positive. I'm pretty sure, I hope I explained that right. Um, so, like, if you were getting, um, like, surgery, you'd have to make sure that you have the right blood because, um, it could cause your organs to fail and your, your killer T cells would start attacking themselves because it would... you had different blood being put into you that doesn't mix they have different different cells for that that would attack each other and wouldn't wouldn't go well for you so and then now to the main drawing of a blood cell and how that works um is that wrong yes okay so for a positive blood Let's say this is, this is your, this will be the blood cell. Um, it will have, if anyone wants to, yeah, it'll have the A antigens, I'll just, yeah, we'll leave it at that, and the B antibodies. And the antibodies are the Y's, the Y-shaped figures. And I'll put the little, I always separate them into, you know, just triangles and squares. Do you ever remember? Um, so that'll show that those antibodies will not attack the antigens because they'll have different can't really see it but I drew a little squares on the end of the antibodies because <laughs> they're anti B and I think of B as the rectangles I don't know why <laughs> it works um so if you were given um say let's go back to the B the B blood if you were given the wrong blood it would okay let's see if I can fill this in here it would so you'd have the B antigens and the A antibodies. Okay, now you really can't see, but I drew triangles on those antibodies. Nope, these ones. Okay, never mind, you can see that. Um, so, if you mixed these two together, if you were getting a transfusion and someone messed up and you got B blood, these uh, antibodies will attack the antigens so it would bind to it um, and then all these these would come over too and do the same thing and, and then these would come over because these are the B antibodies and they would attack the B antigens and then it would cause that agglutination or clumping to occur. Um, um, I really, I hope I explained everything efficiently and correctly. Um, I hope you enjoyed it.
I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> it's, okay. it's, not that, it's not funny. Okay, thanks.